want to figure out what is the magnetic field due to plane of current. And um, I'm going to have to specify current density. And I don't know if there's a standard symbol for this. Because it's not the usual current density where it's a current divided by area. I'm going to want current, the total amount of current, divided by some section, length of the, the sort of the length of the cross section of the plane. Um, I don't think this is a standard symbol, but let me use this symbol. Or plane of, uh, due to plane of current density sigma. And for the purpose of this question here, I will define this sigma to be amount of current per length. That, all right, I, that's, I'm pretty sure that's not the standard <laughs> expression. Um, all right. Um, so we did the very first step, figuring out the direction of magnetic field. Now what I need to do is, um, I need to pick a loop that exploits the symmetry that's shown in these uh, magnetic field directions. So um, do you think I will be picking a circular path? No, right? Nothing here looks circular. So I'm not going to be picking circular path. And so I guess the nature of what, it, what this looks like is that whatever path I pick, I am not going to have my path always be parallel to the uh, magnetic field. Because if I did that, the path never closes. It just goes out to infinity. And I can't do that. I have to, so this is a non-negotiable part. I have to have a closed loop. That's a non-negotiable part of applying Ampere's law. I have to close the loop. So any suggestions on what kind of path I should pick? Kitty? No? I mean, I can get a start. So let's say I start at this point. Oh, or OK, OK, let me do it this way. Uh, let's say some question was asking, well, uh, let's say I have a point here that says some distance d uh, from the plane of the current. And somebody asked you, all right, what is, oh, sorry, let me call this distance actually, g for the g axis. And somebody asked you, what is the magnetic field at a distance g away? Like, that's the actual question. So let me get a start. Let me say, uh, well, I start at some point here, move to the left along the direction of magnetic field, and, and you know, make sure my path includes this point. OK, what am I going to do? I can't just keep on going. That, uh, that'll just take me to infinity. I have to have a plan for making this part of a closed loop. How am I going to close this loop? Yeah, I can go above. And when I turn at 90 degrees here and start going above, um, I hope you realize that that's actually OK. Because as I go at 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees. So any line integral from here is just going to be 0. Um, I want to do this symmetrically. So based on a mirror symmetry, or mirror? No, 180 degree rotational symmetry, I can argue that whatever strength of magnetic field here is, if I go same g distance above, then magnetic field strength here should be the same as magnetic field strength here. So let me go all the way up there, and then now go to the right so that I can actually close this loop. So I pick this uh, rectangular loop. And um, if you recall back to how we did this for Gauss's law, this is actually surprisingly similar. With the Gauss's law, we picked uh, like uh, something that is a surface area, surface area, and connected in a kind of rectangular way. So this is like the, the lower dimensional version of that. So uh, let's... Uh, um, so let's uh, write down some things that I talked through as I was uh, drawing it. So we said that the uh, um, line integral here, b dot dl for this segment is equal to 0. Right? We said b dot dl for this segment 
or I, we didn't say it, but it was implied, this is also equal to zero, right? Because it's at 90 degrees to the magnetic field. This is why it's so important to, to know the direction of magnetic field. So the only two segments I have to worry about are the segments one and two. Yeah. So um, let's go through the motion. So I'm going to say um, Ampere's law. That's my starting point. So I have the line integral B dot DL is equal to mu naught I enclosed. And I'll say, all right, I broke this out into these four segments. Two of the segments gave me zero um, line integral. And the only segment that wasn't zero is segments one and two. So I can say this is the line integral for segment one, B dot DL, plus line integral for segment two, B dot DL. All right, um, where do I go from here? What can I say about the dot product? What does the dot product here look like it's going to do? It's parallel, so it also does nothing. You know, BDL cosine theta, cosine theta is one. So let me just get rid of the vector notation and say it's just going to be like a scalar product uh, where I'm just multiplying their magnitudes together. Okay. Oh, I didn't, I forgot to specify something. Uh, I knew I forgot something. I had to specify, so I know the height of this loop, 2G. Uh, I never specify the width. Right? So I need to specify the width. Let me just uh, use a number. My hope is that this uh, symbol will just uh, cancel out eventually. So let me say this loop that I defined has the width uh, W. And I'm hoping that it will cancel out in the end. Okay, I think I can do these two line integrals now. Line integral for one will be the strength of the magnetic field here times W, okay? So um, this is BW plus, what is the line integral for segment two? Also BW, yeah. The path and magnetic field are going in the same direction. So it, it's plus BW also. And I already made the argument that whatever magnetic field here is, B, it should be the same magnetic field magnitude here from symmetry. Yeah. All right, so the left-hand side is equal to 2BW. All right, I need to work out the right-hand side. So this is where it takes a little more work to figure out how much charge I'm enclosing. So in terms of the densi current density that we are using, how much, how much current am I enclosing? Sorry, what? I over w. Not I over W. So, you know, I didn't specify actual current I because that would be infinite. When you have an infinite plane and you have a uniform like current distribution, it's gonna, if, if I talk about I explicitly, it's gonna be infinite. That's why I'm talking about this density. How much current is flowing per some length of the cross section. So what would the expression for the enclosed current be? Why are you guys all dividing stuff? You have density and you have length. How do you get at the quantity that, so yeah, if you have volume and density, you don't divide the density by volume, you multiply, right? Okay, so uh, the enclosed current is density times the length. Good? Okay, so the right hand side is mu naught sigma w. All right, so from Ampere's law, we can say that these two are equal to each other. Um, I see something's cancel, which is what I was hoping. W's cancel. So whatever this width of the loop was, doesn't matter because it cancels. So I solve for magnetic field. I get magnetic field is equal to mu naught sigma divided by two. Hmm, that looks familiar. Mu naught sigma divided by two. Uh, part of the reason it looks similar is, uh, once again, I'm using the symbol sigma, which we used to use. It's a confusing symbol, sorry. Um, 
So does uh, any feature of this magnetic field look familiar to the feature you saw for electric field due to a plane of charge? Like what feature do you see here? Yeah, it doesn't depend on distance. So I started by pretending that magnetic field could depend on distance. So I didn't assume that magnetic field wouldn't depend on distance. But what this derivation is showing is that it doesn't depend on distance. So if I move this loop closer, then the line integral here wouldn't change. And um, so, so you know, that's the feature you saw with the infinite plane of charge. So intuitively, you can use the same reasoning. You know, both the magnetism and electricity are inverse of square laws. So when you have an infinite plane of stuff, no matter how far away you are, you are still seeing the kind of same half a sphere amount of the stuff, right? So, all right, and um, I guess the rest is kind of that. So it, um, the magnetic field doesn't have any distance dependence, it's just some constant times that. Um, but once again, this is kind of a toy example, like you would never generate magnetic field this way. Plane of charge was actually a physically useful model for capacitors and whatnot, but like I can't imagine an actual physical thing that would have a plane of current somewhere. So, so it's a toy example that just illustrates how you pick your path so that, um, so that you exploit the symmetry and you exploit the portions of path where the, the line integral is going to be zero. 